Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Hearing. A year ago, I had on as my guest Intel's Director of Accessibility, Daryl Adams. This was after Intel's press release on Global Accessibility Awareness Day, announcing their collaboration with 3DP4ME, enabling 3D printing of custom hearing aid molds in underserved areas, and also Intel's plans for enabling direct connection of hearing aids to PCs using LE Audio with advanced functionality. Much has happened at Intel in the last year. To learn more about Intel's initiatives to support hearing impaired and deaf people, for this year's Global Accessibility Awareness Day, I would like to welcome Eric McLaughlin, VP and GM of Wireless Solutions of the Client Computing Group, and Arnaud Pierre, Senior Director, Product and Ecosystem Enablement. Thank you both for joining me. Eric, please share a bit of background with our viewers and also what is the Wireless Solutions Group that you lead? Sure. Uh, thanks, Andy. We're really excited to be here and really appreciate the opportunity to, to share what we're doing and, and where we think things are heading in this area. So um, at Intel, uh, the Wireless Solutions Group is the, is the team that does has the responsibility for all of the wireless hardware and software solutions and innovations that we drive primarily for client and IoT applications. So if you look at um, you know, radios like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, in the past we've done cellular, we've done 60 gigahertz radios, we're always experimenting with things like UWP and other things. So that, and then on top of that, we do software solutions that enhance you know, performance and has productivity. And of course, in this day and age, we're all over working on AI. So uh, that's what the team does. And uh, you know, it's a very exciting and innovative place to be. And uh, we have a lot of fun you know, trying to find ways to improve uh, the, the working and, and connecting lives of, of everyone that uses uh, Intel platforms. Oh, that's great, thanks. And Arnaud? So what we do in the in the wireless and why this is linked to the to the accessibility. So last year, I mean since years we've been working with the Bluetooth C to define the, the LE audio technology. Now the, the spec are released and this is really the, the time to scale this uh, this technology. Last year with Microsoft, we launched what we call the LE Audio Essential, so the connectivity between earbuds and, uh, and PC. We're scaling that now. And of course, uh, this technology and many companies uh, join together to define the spec to connect uh, earable device and earring heads to, to different type of device. And PC is one of the device. This is really important for us to be able to to have a better accessibility in the in the PC ecosystem, and this is what we are driving. So, what you are seeing is that with our partner Microsoft, they announced in October the the connectivity to hearing aids. Earlier this year, they announced uh, uh, more hearing aids functionality. We will discuss and we will show you that. But this is really what we are trying to do. So guarantee a good user experience, accessibility for hard of hearing users. I was oh. just going to add to that that you know you you commented on it earlier that you you know you had uh, another Intel guest last year and and you know as we look at accessibility. You know, part of Intel's charter that, that we repeat internally, you know, as, as we look at, you know, what it is we do and how we spend our time and energy and, and investments is to enhance and improve the lives of every person on earth. And so accessibility is, is, is a passion of ours, right? It's a place where we really feel like we can bring the best of our technology, uh, the best of leading edge technology like BLE, as we've talked about, and, and you know, AI, together to really improve, you know, how people interact with devices, especially those, as, as Arno said, especially those that are hearing impaired. So this is a huge focus for us and something we feel really passionate about. Well, and this is, this is all really exciting because it's a connected and half virtual world. Everybody is using PCs and to the extent that we can enable everybody to perform at their best. Uh, I think is terrific. So, I, I really, I really uh, give uh, credit to Intel for exploring all the different ways they can use the PC for these kinds of features. Now, 
when we talk about people with hearing impairment, uh, what capabilities exist on a modern Intel PC and, and how does it actually work? Sure, so what we enable, I mean, what we're enabling is the direct connectivity between PC and hearing aids. In the past, you needed uh, to have dongles or boxes that you connect and uh, you need to have, a, you need to have a, I mean, to be a, almost a geek to be able to, to connect your, your hearing aids. Um, now with the LE audio, the direct connectivity to PC, user will be able to, to connect directly, uh, pair, um, ease of pairing. Uh, Microsoft has Swift pair. You can pair very fast your, your device. And uh, the quality and the, and, and we want to be sure that the, the quality is good. So maybe what I can do is that I can uh, share the screen of my second PC. I can show you how it looks like in the, on a real laptop. Please do. So this is my second laptop. I have a pair of uh, hearing aids that I will unbox. They are here. And what they need a couple of seconds to, to boot and to connect. I should be already Zoom discovered my, uh, my hearing aids. As you see here, my hearing aids are already connected. Um, I can see that I have two hearing aids, right and left. I can see the battery level of the hearing aid very quickly. I can go in this setting of, um, I can see the icon of the hearing aids. Um, I could use it now. I'm using, the sound is my, on my second PC, but if I want to switch on this PC, I could do that. Here, if I go in the menu, I can get additional uh, settings for my hearing aids. And for example, I can adjust the, the ambient uh, sound level uh, to get, I mean, if I, if I want to get focus on my call, I would probably lower down the, the uh, ambient amplification. Well, and uh, if I want to, 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 to hear what is around me, uh, I can increase that. I have also some uh, preset that has been uh, configure in, in this uh, in this set, and uh, I can switch from one uh, from one preset to the other. So that's really the complete experience, and this is part of the Windows Insider build. And um, Microsoft communicated that it would be part of a future release uh, that would be done uh, later this year. Um, so that the experience this is working out of the box uh, easy pairing good connectivity uh, good voice quality thanks to the new technology and the the, the new codec of the le audio and uh, yeah so that's really interesting so when you're when you're changing the presets you're actually selecting the different hearing aid programs as if you were using the hearing aid app except you're doing it on the pc now correct Correct. Yeah, that has been defined within uh, by the Bluetooth SIG, and uh, so the Bluetooth SIG not only define the, the connectivity and so on, but also define the way to 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 select and to set those uh, those presets. It's part of. And the I can adjust the ambient level as well. So if I want to be aware of my surroundings, but on a more muted basis, while I'm concentrating on the call, I can do that. And you also have an automatic mode for that. It appears. Yeah, so if I set this mode, um, so the, it will use automatically the, the, the preset. So your user has really the, the choice to, to use the automatic mode or can also control manually the, the ambient uh, sound level. Terrific, thanks for sharing it. It all looks very easy and intuitive to operate and adds a lot of functionality to the hearing aids when you're connected online. Yeah. Easy to use. I would put back my hearing aids, and you can see that that was real. I can disconnect, and my wind <laughs> zoom phone that I'm not using anymore. So yeah, easy to use. Okay, terrific. Now, is all of that out of the box functionality for an LE audio device, or is there more? And I guess that's. 
where does the engineered for Intel Evil program fit in, in rel relative to this functionality? So the functionality that I've shown you are part of the, the what will deliver Microsoft and obviously the platform provider of providing the connectivity that will uh, that will enable that. What we do with the engineer for Evo is that we want to ensure the best end-to-end -end quality. And to do that, we realized that we need to work with our ecosystem. We started first the, the program for headset, earbuds, mice, keyboard, and we realized that this is a great infrastructure for us as well to work with the hearing aids provider. Um, so we announced that at least two of them join our the collaboration, uh, GN Resound that has launched their product uh, end of last year. And we also uh, have Starkey as part of, of the program. Um, so for us, this is really a co-engineering program. We define a spec and a requirement that uh, we want the PC and hearing device to, to meet, um, voice quality, time to connect, uh, for as an example, uh, the, the the time to pair, and that force us to meet those criteria. And we work with our OS partner. We work. We improve our solution driver firmware. But the hearing aid vendor, for example, we are fixing bugs and uh, being sure that uh, the quality is there. So this is an co-engineering program. And we use that as well, obviously, to communicate uh, better about the, the functionality. So it's both co-engineering and, uh, and a way to communicate about uh, the, the experience. OK. And one thing I've learned over time anywhere in the accessibility space is that it's really important to have end user input as you develop a program like this one. What have you done there? Oh, yeah, good question. So while we are, I mean, we have several activities, we test in our lab, but we want to be sure that when end user will get those products, that the quality is great. So we have what we call our crowdsourcing validation infrastructure. And specifically in hearing aids, for us, we have to learn. I mean, the, the I'm not a hearing aid user. Uh, we have to learn how people are using uh, those devices. So we fit it like now, I think we have 25, 30 Intel employees that we fitted with uh, hearing aids from different companies. And we gave a laptop with the audio enable and they are using those laptop and hearing aids for their uh, daily work and uh, life. So that, that, is really beneficial and will, I mean, the couple of things we learn is that first, they love the direct connectivity to the to the PC. They love to be able to take a call directly, for example, this call, I could use the, the hearing aids, no need of dongle and so on, so that's great. Um, the comfort is better. They don't need to put an additional uh, headset on top of the, the hearing aid, for example, for some of the, the users. What we also learn is uh, quality is key. Uh, we need to ensure that connectivity, that this is working because this is amplifying the need of quality. Uh, people that are, hear I mean, with hearing it, they must use their device. They need their device. So we cannot have this connection, for example. The, I would say the second learning is that the connect, the Connectivity must be with several devices. You must connect to your to your PC, but I want to use my hearing aids with my phone as well. So the seamless connection from one device to the other is really key. And the third, which is what we we shown in the in the small uh, live demo, is that I mean all the the capability to adjust the ambient sound level, the preset is very important uh, feature as well for, for, for the user. So that's the couple of learning and uh, we're still running those, uh, those, uh, those um, user trial and we will continue to, to improve. Yeah. And so when you think about direct connection to hearing aid then and the feedback you were getting from the users, was it a better experience to be directly connected versus listening with the PC speakers or the headphones? Yeah, most of the users love the experience of uh, being able to, to get 
be less tired after calls. I think it's important. Um, yeah, that was really beneficial uh, for them. The the focus and the, yeah. Well, and and I can testify to that because I had done the things you said. For example, attaching a TV connector to the PC so I could direct stream to mine. And the experience of getting corrected audio directly to your ears is much less fatiguing uh, than it is trying to listen to a headphone or especially to the PC speakers. So I'm not surprised that you got that feedback from the users as well. Did they have prior experience with direct connectivity or was this their first time? Some of the users were using their hearing aids with their phone, so which was, I mean, they are, but the, the primary device they use for working is the PC. So it was kind of, I have my PC and I need to use my, uh, my, my, my phone on the side, which was not a good, uh, good experience. Okay, so they find this uh, truly a meaningful improvement to be direct connected to the PC. Yeah, yeah. And this is something I hope the hearing care professionals in our audience hear because I have found that generally speaking, um, hearing aid users are not being well educated on the connectivity options and it's really detrimental. In the workplace, for example, there are studies that show that people can uh, uh, understand and recall better if they can hear well. Their, their ability to recall falls off if they don't hear well. And that's, of course, really a, a burden on one's uh, career. And, and so it's important to understand that role of connectivity and the fact that it's being made easier and easier just make it that much better for hearing impaired people and your hearing care professionals who are supporting them. Now, you described that you worked with the hearing aid companies to get, uh, you named two of them, to get them in, engineered for Intel Evo verified. How do consumers actually learn which hearing aids are? So on the hearing aid side, we will let uh, those companies communicate uh, about it. I think uh, GN, for example, announced their product line with uh, with the LE Audio capability. So consumers need to look for LE Audio enabled uh, hearing aids. On the client side, on the PC side, so we are starting to communicate about it. And the, the recommendation we have is uh, we have a new product um, that we launched uh, end of last year, which is uh, called uh, Intel Core Ultra. And we have enabled all the Evo platform of Intel Core Ultra with the LE Audio. So if you want to ensure that your laptop is supporting LE Audio, uh, go for an uh, Evo laptop with Intel Core Ultra. And we are working with all the OEMs uh, to ensure the, that LE Audio is enabled out of the box and uh, to get uh, this, uh, this experience when the OS will be launched uh, later this year. Okay, so you look for Core, Core Ultra and Intel Evo, and are those labels on the computer which will also be shown in advertising material? Yeah, so you have uh, Intel Evo, uh, a small black badge uh, of uh, Intel Evo, yeah. And so you've actually done a lot in the last year. When when I talked with Daryl, this was you know at the end of the development, but still in the future. And now you've done so much. What comes next? Well, we we definitely have a, a, a you know a lot of things that we're looking at. Um, I'd say what's next for us besides driving you know these existing products that Arno just showed. Right, help working with Microsoft to get them you know, get these, um, our PCs out the door until Core Ultra, get them into the hands of users, getting, you know, the next version of the OS with the full build in it out, out to users so that, that those two things meet and, and users can actually take advantage of it. So we're not quite finished with that, right? So that has to happen and we'll continue to drive that throughout the rest of this year. But then as we look at, at, at what's next, right? We, we're going to continue to scale LA Audio even outside of those core ultra processors. We want to get it on as many PCs as possible, and OEMs are driving that um, as well. Um, they see the benefits and the and, and the opportunity to ensure that that these devices really support you know this this uh, hearing community. Um, so we see you know the current 
list of core ultras. And as we get into the end of the year, we're launching our next generation Lunar Lake platform, which will also, you know, scale uh, with these LA, LA audio capabilities and any hearing enhancement capabilities. So that's, that's coming up. And then from a feature perspective, um, AuraCast, right? That's, that's big, right? So we're preparing our platforms for that. And we want to, similar to what we've done here, we want to launch in the overall end-to-end -end experience, working with our OS partners, as well as our engineer for Evo and other partners to make sure that, that uh, when you buy a solution, that it's high quality, high reliability, and you know, really delivers on that amazing Auracast experience. So those are the things that are coming in the near term. Okay, so Auracast on the PC means I might have somebody here in the meeting with me. We both could be streaming the audio to our respective devices because you've got Auracast capability on the PC. Yeah, now, correct. I've also, I've also been following and even saw in the Innovation Summit a little while ago uh, Pat Gelsinger, CEO, demonstrating the AI capabilities of the devices. That seems to offer a lot of useful applications in the greater accessibility space. Uh, for example, I saw an Intel video demonstrating OmniBridge, real-time American Sign Language translation. How does that work? Well, pretty exciting stuff, we agree. So obviously, you know, one of the best uh, proponents of all these uh, you know, improvements in, in accessibility is our CEO, Pat, who also uses hearing aids, you know, on a daily basis. So he's passionate and, and helps us to, you know, identify opportunities that we can do to improve, you know, this, this accessibility area. So AIPC is absolutely a place where this, this can happen. I think you mentioned, um, you know, in a, in some of our previous discussions that you saw, uh, and, and Arno was front and center on this, is that Pat demonstrated in Intel Vision last year how we used AI on the AIPC to do local processing to once a user is connected direct with their hearing aids to the PC and are immersed in that experience to actually have the ability to differentiate via AI a knock on the door, a ring of a doorbell, or a person trying to get the, the person's attention and having a prompt coming up on the screen to allow them to know that in addition to that immersive experience they're having, that there's things outside of that that, that need their attention, something they couldn't you know, really easily do before. So that's an example. That's a demo. We're working on how we take that into product. But as you mentioned, there's other things that we're working on, including using AI and, and the AI PC with the processing power that can be spread across a, a CPU, a GPU, and an NPU on an Intel platform to enable training and use cases that allow us to take somebody doing sign language on one end of the call and translate the text and eventually voice on the other side of the call. So something we're really excited about, um, it, again, it, it enhances that connection between, you know, hearing impaired um, or hearing challenged individuals, as well as, you know, the rest of the people on the call that, that may not be hearing challenged. And, and people can, can interact in a way that is natural for them, right? So pretty exciting things that are really great use of AI and a really great use of an AI PC along with these capabilities we've been talking about, about you know, the direct connective hearing aids and, and the hearing accessibility features into that, into that experience. Yeah, I found the ASL translation to be really fascinating and it looked like in a video I could actually use it in a real world as well. For example, if I took, if I was traveling, well, I'll give you an example. I went to an accessibility conference called CSUN and at the booth I was at, a deaf person came with a translator who was translating ASL for me because I don't sign. And I thought, wow, if I had like my portable camera like this one, I just faced it out. I could sit in front of my PC and I could watch the translation, right? So the burden wouldn't be on the deaf person to do the translation. I would see to the translation just as I would if I were going to a foreign country trying to hear another spoken language. Uh, did I understand that correctly? Because that's a really fascinating capability to have. 
You did, yeah, and 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 as we work to, you know, to deliver this capability, um, we absolutely see that as a as a, a great use case, right? And and as you say, we we often meet in in these you know conferences and conference rooms and and other venues, and having the ability to 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 utilize that that AIPC and the cameras that are you know already in them or connected to them like yours. To, to real time improve that interaction between those two types of, of, of individuals. So yeah, exciting use case uh, and, and we're you know working diligently to try to bring that to the market. This is exciting. I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed by the full scope of work Intel is doing in the accessibility space. Uh, are there any other initiatives we haven't talked about today that you'd like to highlight or any closing thoughts, either one of you? Well, I think um, I'll let Arno highlight anything, um, you know, uh, future-wise that he wants to. I think the the way I would summarize is, you know, we've kind of talked about, you know, this, but I think first of all, accessibility and PC is we're just scratching the surface. It's really important. Um, these devices have become our primary communication device. And, you know, we use these devices every day for more types of of calls and communication than I do my phone anymore. And so we have to continue to invest to improve the, not just the quality as Arno said, but the, the usability, the features, the swiftness, and and especially for um, the, the engagement between, um, you know, for example, the hearing impaired and, and, and or deaf users with the hearing users and figure out how best to make this happen. and. You know, we're really thrilled at what's happening in the industry, right? We're not the only ones engaged here. We got Microsoft, we've got the, you know, the hearing hearing aid companies, we have the accessory companies all engaged to try to make all of these things go work together. And when you layer AI on top of that and, and just the, the capabilities that AI will bring to us to, to take data that's resident on, on you know, our Bluetooth or wireless or PC, and take that data, understand the environment, be contextually aware, understand what's being done, what apps are being used, what the intent is, and take that data, analyze it, and put it into an AI engine to deliver an experience that um, absolutely will enhance our ability to communicate together. So really, really excited about what's to come. You know, we'll we'll have more, you know, announcements as we, we have more things, uh, you know, to share. But I, I just think that that the world is going to change a lot, and we're excited to be a part of that. Any last thoughts or no? I think Eric summarized it pretty well. So we need to work with the ecosystem. We need to to make sure we deliver this uh, this experience, and uh, AI will help us to improve. And uh, yeah. Well, I really appreciate you both taking the time to dig into everything Intel's doing in this space. I mean, no doubt it's going to have a positive impact on hearing impaired people and deaf people too, uh, navigating both the real and the virtual worlds. As you said, we go back and forth between almost seamlessly now. If people want to learn more, or they want to reach out to either one of you, how would they do it? You know, I'm on LinkedIn, contact me on LinkedIn and we can, you know, we can uh, connect there. But um, absolutely open to, to you know, folks giving our NOAA I call and, and uh, figuring out how, how we can engage together. Terrific. Uh, thanks again to you both. And thanks also to everyone for watching or listening to this edition of This Week in Hearing.